Hi guys, so let's start with chapter number one. What, where, how and when. So what, what can we know about the past? There are several things we can find out. What people ate, the kinds of clothes they wore, the houses in which they lived. We can find out about the lives of hunters, herders, farmers, rulers, merchants, priests, craftspersons, artists, musicians and scientists. We can also find out about the games children played, the stories they heard, the plays they saw, the songs they sang. Where did people live? Find the river Narmada on map 1, page 2. Where is River Narmada? River Narmada is here. People have lived along the banks of this river for several hundred thousand years. Some of the earliest people who lived here were skilled gatherers. That is people who gathered their food. They knew about the vast wealth of plants in the surrounding forest and collected roots, fruits and other forest produce for their food. They also hunted animals. Now find the Suleiman and Kirthar hills to the northwest. Okay. Here is Kirthar. And here is Suleiman. Some of the areas where women and men first began to grow crops such as wheat and barley about 8000 years ago are located here. People also began rearing animals like sheep, goat and cattle and lived in villages. Locate the Garo Hills to the northeast and the Vindhyas in central India. So let's find out the Garo Hills. Garo Hills and Vindhyas. Here's the Vindhyas. These are some of the other areas where agriculture developed. The places where rice was first grown are to the north of the Vindhyas. Rice was first grown are to the north of the Vindhyas. North of the Vindhyas. Okay. Facing page. This is a map of South Asia including the present countries of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan and Sri Lanka and the neighboring countries of Afghanistan, Iran, China and Myanmar. South Asia is often called a subcontinent because although it is smaller than a continent, it is very large and it is separated from the rest of Asia by seas, hills and mountains. So, South Asia. South Asia is often called the subcontinent. Because although it is smaller than a continent, it is very large and is separated from the rest of Asia by seas, hills and mountains. Trace the river Indus and its tributaries. So what are tributaries? Tributaries are smaller rivers that flow into a larger river. So let's trace the river, the Indus river and its tributaries. So where is the Indus River? Okay. So this is the Indus River and its tributaries we can say 
एस झेलम रिवर चेनाब रिवर ब्यास रिवर रवि रिवर सतलुज रिवर कबूल रिवर इज ऑल्सो हियर ओके देन About 4,700 years ago, some of the earliest cities flourished on the banks of these rivers. Later, about 2,500 years ago, cities developed on the banks of the Ganga and its tributaries and along the sea coast. So, about 4,700 years ago, some of the earliest cities flourished on the banks of these rivers, that is the Indus. Later, about 2,500 years ago, cities developed on the banks of the Ganga and its tributaries and along the sea coast. Okay. So, this will be years ago. Banks of Ganga. locate the ganga and its tributary called the son ganga and son where is ganga ganga river is here and one of its tributary that is the son river is here then In ancient times the area along these rivers to the south of the Ganga was known as Magadha South of the Ganga South of Ganga is called Magadha so south of the river Ganga in this part south of the river Ganga south of the river Ganga we are going to say this is magadha part okay its ruler were very powerful and set up a large kingdom kingdoms were set up in other parts of the country as well throughout people traveled from one part of the subcontinent to another the hills and hill the hills and high mountains including the himalayas deserts rivers and seas made journeys dangerous at times but never impossible so men and women moved in search of livelihood as also to escape from natural disasters like floods or droughts sometimes men marched in armies conquering others lands besides merchants traveled with caravans or ships carrying valuable goods from place to place and religious teachers walked from village to village town to town stopping to offer instructions and advice on the way finally some people perhaps traveled driven by a spirit of adventure wanting to discover new and exciting places all these led to the sharing of ideas between people why do people travel nowadays look at map 1 once more hills mountains and seas form the natural frontiers of the subcontinent hills mountains and seas so we are going to have we have the hills here the hills here we have got hills here so hills mountains okay this will be the mountains and hills then forest seas
formed the natural frontiers of the subcontinent. While it was difficult to cross these frontiers, those who wanted could and did scale the mountains and cross the seas. People from across the frontiers also came into the subcontinent and settled here. These movements of people enriched our cultural traditions. People have shared new ways of carving stone, composing music, and even cooking food over several hundreds of years. Names of the land Two of the words we often use for our country are India and Bharat. What do we use are India and Bharat. The word India comes from the Indus called Sindhu in Sanskrit. Okay. Word India comes from the Indus called uh, comes from the Indus called Sindhu in Sanskrit. Find Iran and Greece in your atlas. The Iranians and the Greeks who came through the northwest about 2,500 years ago and were familiar with the Indus, called it the Hindus or the Indos. So they called Hindus or the Indos. And the land to the east of the river was called India. And the land to the east of the river, Indus, was called India. The name Bharat was used for a group of people who lived in the northwest. The name Bharat was used for a group of people. was used for a group of people who lived in the Northwest and who are mentioned in the Rig Veda. The earliest composition in Sanskrit stated to about 3500 years ago. thousand five hundred years ago finding out about the past there are several ways of finding out about the past one is to search for and read books that were written long ago these are called manuscripts which are written long ago. Which are called manuscripts. Because they were written by hand, which comes from the Latin word manu, meaning hand. Manu, it means hand. These are usually written on palm leaf. So these are usually written on palm leaf. Or on the specially prepared bark of a tree known as the birch bark of a tree and we call this bark as the birch which grows in the himalayas okay this birch tree is grown in the himalayas over the years many manuscripts were eaten away by insects some were destroyed but many have survived after 
often preserved in temples and monasteries. So what is this picture? A page from a palm leaf manuscript. This manuscript was written about a thousand years ago. The palm leaves were cut into pages and tied together to make books. To see a birch bark manuscript turn to page 45. These books dealt with all, all, kind of, all kinds of subjects, religions, religious beliefs and practices, the lives of kings, medicine and science. Besides, there were epics, poems, plays. Many of these were written in Sanskrit, others were in Prakrit. Okay, these were written in Sanskrit others were written in Prakrit languages used by ordinary people and Tamil in Sanskrit we can also study inscriptions these are writings so what are these inscriptions inscriptions these are writings on relatively hard surfaces such as stone it will be stone or metal so these are writings on relatively hard surfaces such as stone or metal Sometimes kings got their orders inscribed so that people could see, read and obey them. There are other kinds of inscriptions such as well, where men and women including kings and queens recorded what they did. For example, kings often kept records of victories in battles. Can you think of the advantages of writing on a hard surface and what could have been the difficulties? And old inscription. This inscription dates to about 2250 years ago and was found in Kandahar, present day Afghanistan. It was written on the orders of a ruler called Ashoka. You will read about him in chapter 8. When we write anything, we use a script. Scripts consist of letters or signs. When we read what is written or speak or use a language, these inscriptions was written in two different scripts and languages greek the top part and aramaic below part okay greek the top part this is greek and the lower part this is aramaic which were used in this area in this area would be afghanistan There were many other things that were made and used in the past. Those who study these objects are called archaeologists. There were many other things that were made and used in the past. Those who study these objects are called archaeologists. These are called archaeologists. They study the remains of buildings made of stone and brick, paintings and sculpture. They also explore and excavate, that is dig, 
under the surface of the earth to find tools, weapons, pots, pens, ornaments and coins. Some of these objects may be made of stone, others of bone, backed clay or metal. Objects that are made of hard, imperishable substances usually survive for a long time. So the left a pot from an old city. Pots like these were used about 4,700 years ago. Right, an old silver coin. Coins such as this one were in use from about 2,500 years ago. In what ways is the coin different from the ones we use today? Archaeologists also look for bones of animals, birds and fish to find out what people ate in the past. Plants remains survive far more rarely. If seeds of grains or pieces of wood have been burned, they survive in a charcoal form. Do you think cloth is found frequently by archaeologists? No, because clothes are ma are plant based, so they will not be found. Because plant remains survive far more rarely. Mm, it's mentioned here. Historians, that is scholars who study the past, often use the word source to refer to the information found from manuscripts. Okay, the term source, the term source, it would mean either manuscripts, inscriptions, and archaeology. Once sources are found, learning about the past becomes an adventure as we reconstruct it bit by bit. So historians and archaeologists are like detectives who use all these sources like clues to find out about our past. One past or many. Did you notice the title of this book, Our Past? We have used the word past in plural to draw attention to the fact that the past was different for different groups of people. For example, the lives of herders or farmers were different from those of kings and queens. The lives of merchants were different from those of craftspersons and so on. Also, as it's true even today, People followed different practices and customs in different parts of the country. For example, today most people live in the Andaman Islands, get their own food by fishing, hunting and collecting forest produce. By contrast, most people living in cities depend on others for supplies of food. Differences such as these existed in the past as well. Besides, there is another kind of difference. We know a great deal about kings and the battles they fought because they kept records of their victories. Generally, ordinary people such as hunters, fishing folk, gatherers, farmers or herders did not keep records of what they did. While archaeology helps us to find out about their lives, there is much that remains unknown. What do death okay, what do deaths mean? If somebody says uh, if somebody asks you the date, you will probably mention the day, month and year. 
2000 and something now it's 2020 these years are counted from the date generally assigned to the birth of jesus christ the founder of christianity so 2000 means 2000 years after the birth of christ so 2020 will mean 2020 years after the birth of christ all dates before the birth of christ are christ are counted backwards and usually have the letters bc before christ added on in this book we will refer to dates going back from the present using 2000 as our starting point letters with dates bc we have seen stands for before christ you will sometimes find ad before dates this stands for two latin words anno domini meaning in the year of the lord that is christ so 2005 can also be written as AD 2005 anno domini in the year of the lord sometimes ce is used instead of ad and bce instead of bc bc will be before christ before christ okay bce Sometimes CE is used instead of AD and BCE instead of BC. The letters CE stands for common era. So CE common era means AD. Okay, AD, CE common era and O domini all are same. CE can be used instead of AD and AD can be used instead of CE. CE stands for common era and AD stands for anno domini and BCE for before common era before common era instead of BC that is before Christ we use these terms because the christian era is now used in most countries of the world in india we begin using this form of dating from about 200 years ago and sometimes the letters bp meaning before present are used find two dates mentioned on page 3 which set of letters would you use for them so let's find out elsewhere in the world what's happening during this time we have seen that inscriptions are written on hard surfaces many of these were written several hundreds of years ago all inscriptions contain both scripts and languages languages which were used as well as scripts have changed over time so how do scholars understand what was written this can be done through a process known as decipherment known as decipherment One of the most famous stories of decipherment comes from Egypt, a country in North Africa where there were kings and queens about 5000 years ago. Rosetta. Okay, Rosetta. Rosetta is a town on the east coast of Egypt. 
and here an inscribed stone was found which contained inscriptions in three different languages and scripts three different first one is greek and two forms of egyptian scholars who could read greek figured out that the names of kings and queens were enclosed in a little frame called a cartouche cartouche they then placed the greek and the egyptian signs side by side and identify the sounds for which the egyptian letters stood scholars who could read greek figured out that the names of kings and queens were enclosed in a little frame they then placed the greek and the egyptian sites signs side by side and identified the sounds of which the egyptian letters stood as you can see a lion stood for l and a bird for a once they knew what the letters stood for they could read other inscriptions as well hmm. okay a lion l a bird a You have to interview an archaeologist. Prepare a list of five questions that you would like to ask her or him. Match the following. These are the keywords. Traveling, manuscripts, inscriptions, archaeology, historian, source, decipherment. Match the following. Narmada Valley. Magadha, the first big kingdom, Garo Hills, Indus and its tributaries, Ganga Valley, Ganga Valley, cities about two thousand five hundred years ago. hunting and gathering narmada valley garo hills early agriculture okay let's see whether it's true or not narmada valley hunting and gathering narmada valley magadha garo hills indus and its tributaries then ganga valley so the narmada valley narmada valley it would be hunting hunting and gathering magadha the first big kingdom then the garo hills it would be early agriculture indus and its tributaries the first cities then ganga valley it would be cities about 2500 years ago Thank you guys